bear. That's a bear. Yep, that's our first black bear. Tragedy kind of hit Highway 7 today afternoon. Highway 7 still closed. Fortunately, a dump truck fully loaded crossed the center line. had a head-on collision with a uh, Hope towing tow truck. We're in Hope right now, so basically one of the tow truck drivers in this town unfortunately has passed away due to a head-on collision. The highway's still closed. It's Highway 7, just north of the Fraser River. Stay alert. Just leaving Esso here in Hope. New truck stop. Go through Manning Park. At least we'll get into Manning Park. Climb all these mountains. is eating her cheese sticks. It is 6.23 p.m. May the 10th. And this video is brought to you by Sutco Transportation. Sutco is hiring class one flat deck drivers in BC and Alberta. Go to sutco.ca to apply and use promo code QUANTFAN receive an extra $100 on your first payday. Yeah, Dispatch had uh, had some extra work for me today. Or they had to do a bunch of extra work to try to get my loads scheduled. It's a little bit of chaos at the end of the day. I don't know, we're, what, what, what were we saying we were doing yesterday? A lot has happened since yesterday. We're supposed to be in the U.S. Okay, so yesterday we said this video was going to be from the U.S. Rathrum. We were heading to Rathrum. Yeah, we didn't do that. Up the uh, number one highway northbound out of Hope to Cash Street. Excellent driver. Hey, thank you very much. Yeah, there was a fair amount of traffic through Jack after the construction zone, but uh, went, went smooth. Uh, good news. Thank you. So, a different truck driver had a air leak problem and he was down a few hours, long enough that he wasn't going to be able to pick up his load, which is a high priority load. So instead of heading to Rathro, I got that load, which was two drops. One in New Westminster and another one in Richmond. Then I had three pickups today. One in Richmond, one in Abbotsford, and the last one was in Maple Ridge. So after picking up the first one and doing the math, 
called dispatch and said, Hey, what time are these places closing? Because we're running out of time. You're gonna have to pick one or the one or the other of the second load because I'm not gonna make it for both of them. One in Abbotsford was a container. One in Maple Ridge was just a four stacks of empty pallets. Like, we're gonna figure this out. Just head for the container place, and if anything changes, we'll call you. A couple minutes later, stop heading that way. Like, well, I'm on Highway One. It's not much of a. I can't really stop anywhere. What are you guys thinking, and where am I best to keep going, or do a U-turn? Where? where? Like, if we're changing the plans, you'll be loading a Langley. I'm like, okay, I will pull over in Langley, stop and wait for instruction. But remember, if I stop, I can no longer make either of those pickups. 10 4. Then I got a call. Hey, you'll be loading in Langley, but we couldn't get an appointment for today. So you'll have to load tomorrow morning? It's like 2 p.m. It's 2 p.m. I'm like, really? I can't load today? It's only 2 p.m. No, they don't have any appointments available. I'm like, well, I can't park anywhere over here. So, okay, no problem. I'm like, I'll have to find a place to park. I'll have to drive to Abbotsford if I have to. to find a parking spot. But I was looking on the map, got just to look it up. Like, that's only a little way down the road. Let's just go see. Maybe we can park in their parking lot overnight. So I pulled into their yard and there's all sorts of activity going on. So I talked to the first forklift driver I saw and I'm like, hey, I'm picking up this load for this and this place little confusion why there's a truck coming in and uh, I just go oh I'm on the appointment here it says that I can't load till tomorrow morning but I was just gonna see if I can park here overnight he goes let me go to the office and see if your order is ready so if your order is ready I might as well load you tonight so he went in the office, found the order, and goes, yeah, almost the whole order's ready. There's just one part of the pound that needs to be finished, just stacked. So we'll, we'll load you today. I'm like, awesome. I didn't have to end my day at 2 p.m. I get to drive. Which makes me happy. That's a 60. Doing 90. Let's not do that. So I was not looking forward to finding a place to sleep. Like we have a spot in Langley that we can sleep, but that's not at 2, 2 p.m. The roads are full of cars. I can sleep in that place in Langley usually if I get a ride after 6 p.m. So I would have four hours of just what doing circles around blocks. I'm like that's just not, it's not gonna work. When I pulled into the yard, I just go well. They said, no, I can't sleep in their yard overnight. I'm like, where can I sleep? He goes, at the Walmart, they park over there. Another person goes, yeah, but they also ticket people for spending the night over there. And, and vehicles get vandalized there overnight. I'm like, well, that, that's, I'm not, nope, I'm not a fan of that. So if you can't load me today, I'm, I'm driving away and it won't be here until tomorrow later because I'll be sleeping far away from here. I'm not going to keep driving around. But, I got loaded. He was halfway done loading when his boss came out and goes, what are you doing? Well, I'm loading this guy. The order is ready, so why not? He goes, well, we have all this other stuff. I'm like, he goes, yeah, but we won't have this truck tomorrow. All these will be out of the way. He goes, okay, whatever. 
Boston seems to be happy he was loading it. He goes, the forklift driver goes, what? The load's ready. Why not load it? He goes, this driver is going to have to go around, sit around, do nothing. If, if we load him, he can get drive and get out of here. So, super nice. And it was, his boss was angry at him. There was, it seemed to be a friendly banter. Like a gentle supervision. <laughs> the gentle supervision, like I'm your supervisor. I'm trying yeah. to just supervise. What are you doing? Why? Right? Sunday Summit, I didn't see that one. Another one was here in Manning Park. Never seen one there before, so that, that was new, new to me. It was like a teenager, it was pretty young. It's about time we get this paved. Hopefully these guys are more skilled at paving as of the last line up the center where they pave the, that, that, that edge better than the last crew. I remember that most of any park, if you hit that little edge, you're going to change lanes. Dude, speed limit's 50 here. Construction zone. I guess I was just speeding a little way back too, so I guess I'm a hypocrite there. This lip right here. Oh, I don't even feel the lip. Hey, they're doing a decent job. You're hired, guys. Please keep that work up. Good job. Eleven degrees Celsius. Did I say that already? I don't recall. Look, look, I'm going fifty two. The hundred and four. You're doing a hundred and four car. You double the speed limit. That in BC is um, they park your car, take your license plate, and a tow truck comes and gets your car. And for a week, I think, or something? Yeah, you, you, your car is gone for a week. And your driver's license is cut up. You have to go reapply for driver's license. I don't know if you have to reapply, but you're, you lose your driver's license. Down. 
through, we'll see that paved further and further now. now that's one day's worth of work right there. This, this road's in such bad condition. It's nice to uh, nice to see them paving this road. Is that fresh snow on top of that mountain? Sure is. I don't know why it wouldn't be snow over here. Yeah, it rained on its hard, so. We were definitely in the wait five minutes and it will change weather day. Yeah, I was pretty lucky. Untarped, untarped in the morning with no rain, but it pretty much rained on and off. Very strategically in my favor. I didn't have to go outside in the rain once, but it was raining hard and a lot. So our next load, once we deliver the, so we only had two pickups after all that. So we got first drop off is Grand Forks tomorrow morning, second is in Trail. Then we go to Innovative Wood, a company that I did not know existed anymore. I hadn't picked up from there for months now. Going to Post Falls, Idaho. So I guess that means Kootenai Pass tomorrow night. Yeah. Hopefully the snow stops. It was supposed to be yesterday, so it should be good. It's weird for me that screen turning off. I've just programmed it so that the screen turns off. I don't even know if we're recording. Of course, there's a red light on the back so you can see. Yeah. You want me to change it? No. Okay. It's probably a good idea with summer coming. But eventually, I won't know that I'm not recording. And I can't see the microphone volume either. So there are some issues there. You can change how long it takes to turn off. Sometimes I've seen the microphone stop working and it's like, oh, it got unplugged. But I guess as long as we make sure it all works at the beginning, we should be okay. It'll just be, yeah, get used to that. I do find it interesting that they, are, that they painted all the lines right before they started paving. Yeah, I don't get that. Seems like a bit of a tax dollar waste. It's not the silliest thing they've done, though, probably. No, not the silliest thing they've done, but. I was reading an article earlier about the snowpack level. Are you looking up an article? You realize there's no cell service here. You realize when you look it up, but. Can you open your browser? It's still loaded. It's still loaded. Oh, okay. And it does tell me I have full bars here for some reason. Uh, yeah, that's right. There's uh, like a mile worth of cell service here in, in this valley. Sunshine Valley. That's the word I'm looking for. I didn't. I forgot the word sunshine. So is this our uh, flood risk is higher in the North Thompson? Right now. Yeah, snow can be high. But in Okanagan is low. But since the uh, cooler weather is delayed, the snow melts. Cooler weather so far in May is helping. But the worry is it's not melting, that we're going to get the sudden heat wave. And oh, that, it's not melting. When it does get hot, it's going to melt like a 
Oh, yeah. And on top of that, the worry that June is usually our rainiest. So it's melting slowly. And if we just have a high rain and a oh, heat wave. If we get a heat wave in June with a lot of rain, we're going to have massive flooding and mudslides. Yeah. On top of their saying right now with all the rivers just being rebuilt from November floods, they're going to give in very quickly. Huh. So this cooler weather I thought was better for the river ends up probably not going to be better. It's better right now, but in a month from now, it might not be better. Because a lot of the snowpacks are saying they're still over 100%. The numbers actually increased from last month. Because of all the snow we've been getting. Yep. Because of the cooler temperatures, we've only been saving up more snow on the top. Yeah, because we've been talking about that we're afraid we're not going to, like, we feel like we have any normal spring temperature today. And we're afraid we're going to go right to summer temps, no spring temps. Yeah, yeah, because it's, it's 8 degrees Celsius here. We've had very cool, a very cool spring. Yes. Spring it hasn't really shown up. Mm -hmm. I hadn't thought of that. If there's still so much snow up there, and it all of a sudden gets hot. The hot wave comes through, and it's going to rain. It could be a disaster for flooding. Especially the well, areas that got flooded last November. That's what they're really worried about. Because they're soft already. The banks have been washed away already. Highway 8 is still not open from that. Yep. yep. Coquihalla is temporarily fixed. Highway 1 is temporarily fixed. Such a weird feeling load. The balance is just off. The balance is just very off on this. It just feels weird. It's, it's, it's a, quite a light load. Light enough I didn't even bother looking at the gauges. So I don't know how heavy I am. We even went through a scale in that angle. I look. went through a scale and didn't look, yeah. <laughs> well, I did see the drives hit uh, 10,000. So you can go 15,000 on the drives. But the trailer, I didn't even look at it. But the trailer's got to be almost empty. Because um, it's just hot tubs. It's fiberglass hot tubs. But on the very, very front, I have four pallets of concrete blocks. The rest is just hot tub, so it's almost like I don't have a trailer and I just have all my weight on my drives. That's what it feels like. It's just, it feels different. There's a lot of yellow um, the lily, pads. lily pads blooming in the, yeah. in the river on the side. I, I saw uh, yesterday when we were going to Salmo. Oh, look at all those yellow lily pads yeah. there. From Nelson to Samuel, there's that Martian land like that. Yep. That's what that was. It's really cool. I don't know if you guys can see that on the camera, but there was hundreds of lily pads blooming yellow. They're like these 
big yellow flowers coming out. It's pretty cool. Maybe there's some more here. No. Now that I've said it, we're probably done. There's a couple in there. watching this what did you call there's a marsh there's a bog and there's what a glen fern a fern okay a fern so a marsh bog and fern i don't know the difference someone better tell me the difference i just call it all marshland and if there's anyone else knows the answer to those Three differences. Beat Bob to the answer. Dare you? I'm tempted to Google it, but I probably will forget by the time we have some service. Speaking of comments in chat, I've had some new users in here that come in. So if if you guys are a new subscriber and hanging out and commenting in here, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. But if you're going to come in here and have, no, I, first off, let's make it very clear. I am good with critique. I like critique. Come and give me your critique. But please do it with a positive attitude and mix it with good comments too. Give, give us positive and negative critique. I don't mind it. But if every single one of your comments is negative, and it ends with a duh at the end. I have no use for you. Please leave our channel right now. Goodbye. We, this is such a positive community. Everybody is so awesome. And yeah, we do a lot of critiquing of each other and it's a really, really good community. Let's keep it that way. Um, if you come in here and every single comment will be negative, I will ban you from the channel eventually, so kind of go through your last 20 comments you've left me. If there's more negative than positive, I'd appreciate some positive in there too. It doesn't have to be more positive than negative, but mostly you guys do a lot of positive and some negative and some good critique. I love constructive criticism because I want to get better every single day. I want to make my videos better. But if your tongue's poison, you're not doing the internet right, you need to learn how to internet, because it's not going to work for you. I would also say it eventually gets to you, because you put so much work into the channel. Yeah. That yeah. always feeling it, like you're not doing enough will get to you. It doesn't. So my concern is this. It, I can take all those comments. I don't mind. But it poisons the whole community, right? It starts to create... It creates a negative vibe in the whole community. And we've had done such a good job. We've hit 2,000 subscribers. 99.9% .9 of everybody's positive. But all it takes is one or two people that have that negative vibe. So if, if your tongue's poisoned and you don't have anything good to say, uh, just don't watch my channel. I. I don't have a um, use for you. I don't need a lot of subscribers. I'm not here for the subscribers. I'm here for that positive community. So, And yeah, call me out on it when I'm not positive. I have those days. I have bad days. I'm a hypocrite sometimes. I'll admit that right away. And yes, I actually read every single comment and respond to a whole bunch of them. Because it's fun. It's an awesome community. Here comes my favorite part of Manning Park. 
all these corners on the cliff edge. straight up, the other side straight down. Well, I guess not straight, but it's way down. You don't want to drive off this road. I'm often surprised there are not more barriers down this road. Like, you know the river is down there, but I can't see it. So this water ends up in the Skagit River, which flows to Washington. Huge farmland Skagit Valley in Washington. Mm -hmm. Here, not so much. <laughs> beside us in the, at least in the valleys down there you can see still still quite a bit of snow this would be the right time of day for bear too so yeah i remember we see most of them in early june like after that like it's too hot so i don't know if there's snow if they're just not as active there's but, not a lot of grass on the shoulders anyway yeah. so. Probably won't see them grazing here another another week or two, two weeks. And then we have to make sure we actually get runs from here to get them. So. I definitely wasn't expecting the moose yesterday, so. No, no. I was looking because I know where we've seen them before, but I was not expecting to see two of them. One trip over here, remember so beautiful? To Vancouver and back, and we saw nine bears on that whole trip. That was, we were leaving really early. We came through here at like 7 a.m. Yeah. I guess that's not so early for me anymore. Back in the day, 7 a.m. was really early for me. We came through here at 7 a.m. We were driving to uh, Stanley Park to do the uh, Walk for Miracles. Yeah, we saw so many bears. Including the biggest bear I've ever seen. Yep, that was the biggest bear we've ever photographed. Linda, you drive a mini? This bear was the size of your mini. And it was big. <laughs> it was a beefy, beefy, big, wide, like such a wide stance. It's like. I want to get on the wrong side of that dude.
thought here. Uh, I this to you on the okay. I know. Uh, I'm on a completely different subject now, but I have to explain how I got there. Uh huh. Um, Stanley Park, yeah. the walk. Yeah. We were dressed up as pirates. Yeah. So I was thinking, now that my brother goes sword fighting, I should bring my fire pirate sword in and see what kind of a garbage sword that actually is. No. Or if it's an actual. How real of a sword it is. When I bought it, they claim it was a real sword. It wasn't just not a sharp edge. I should bring it to him and see how real of a sword it is if it's balanced correctly and it's strong enough to actually fight with. Yeah, that would be interesting. He would know. Yeah. And then it came to me that, oh, you want to buy an RV and start living in it and then cross the border with it. I've got to give up that sword. Yeah, there's a couple of things. And then I thought, I have Glamadring and Sting hanging on the wall. Oh no. I have to give those up too. We cannot cross the we cannot cross the border with a big sword hanging on the side of the wall or inside the RV. And yeah, those ones are sharp. And those are sharpened. Once again, I don't know how real those are. But doesn't your brother own a few of them? Yeah. You could have them. Yeah. Would, I think I would donate those swords to my brother. He can finish his collection of swords on the wall. He does not have those. Yeah. That's the best option. They were made from, uh, or house of knives made them, so. Or at least sold them. So. They're, they're real. They're real weapons. Real knives. Very, very big book for knives, but. That's how I got to that subject. I'm like, ha, huh, I have to give up my sword. I hang on the wall and I don't do anything with it anyway, but. I think that's when you start to realize how materialistic we used to be and how we don't need to be. Yeah, we used to collect stuff. Yeah. Now we don't. It's like, ha, huh, really don't need them. It's deer. The three deer on the side there. Landing right in. I didn't know a deer were such mountain goats. some cones in the river. Uh, at least two barrels. Those big barrel cones. We've got two of them laying in the river. You found out what happens when you run over dunnage today. Huh. Yeah, I just clipped the edge of a dunnage in the yard and that beam went just shooting. It's like, whoa! Got fired at a load of a cannon. I mean, it didn't shoot further than like 20 feet, but still, if someone had been standing there. I guess they're just working on the river. Yeah, they're probably trying to get ahead of the melt. Yeah, I think they're probably working on the river. It's just got part, this had flooding issues here too, right? So, yeah, they just want us to slow down because they're working on the river here. Bear! Bear! Yep, that's our first black bear. Left hand side there, you guys all see him right on the top edge there, we want on the tree line. Sweet! Good job. I would not have looked that way. I it's, was watching my mirrors. These hills are where yeah. we always see them. So. Sweet! First black bear. Good job. Keep your eyes open for more. Mm -hmm. 
always told myself is what I did. Where's Waldo Books for? Is this the section that we always see the bears from here to the lodge, or a little bit back from the cliff, from those cliffs to the lodge? Between that section is most common where we'll see the bears. One black bear and on bear on our checklist. Stop blocking the view, just needs to find another bear. Should I slow down a bit and let him finish the pass? It's obviously fast enough, or he sped like crazy through the construction. Four K 
camera. This might be the first time we're shooting bears with 4K. Allison Summit over here. Is this the summit? It's the summit's going to come. Either way, it's, it's the top of the house. I don't know if this is the highest bump or the other upcoming one is. But We're done climbing for a bit. Well, to the other end of Manning Park, and then we do some more climbing to stun the summit. Climbing and more climbing? Well, no, after Sunday. I guess after Sunday we have a lot of downhill before we climb again. Yeah. Did that say 70 or 50? I'm not sure if it's 50 here already. I know 50 up ahead, but I don't know if it's 50 already. I wasn't paying enough attention. Either way, we want to go through here really slowly because yeah, that sign says 50. The road is just so bad here. This is just a bridge replacement here. Nothing to do with the floods and stuff, but I think the floods slowed the bridge construction down. Oh yeah. All the equipment got pulled out so they can use them more important. And then I did a number to this side of the bridge. This road is just messed up. Oh, they got the big beams on the bridge there already, so they're working on it. And then I'm guessing as soon as they have that bridge replaced, they'll put us two lane on the other side on the new bridge, the new road, and then replace the bridge on this side. up over here as well. The new bridge has got to be like 10 feet higher up than the old bridge. Yeah, it's quite tall. They're increasing the clearance underneath and I'm guessing for fall the flooding and stuff. Realizing the old bridge is quite up to the par for all the, all the flooding.
guess we're following the Snookabee River, or is that... Once again, which way is that river flowing? Yes, it's flowing with us, so that is the Snookabee River. So we've gotten over Alice or something like that. Has to be. I just wasn't paying attention. Another question, anyone living in the U.S., do you know if you have to register a water vessel like a kayak before entering your state? So apparently that's a thing in the U.S. Certain states? Yeah. So if we go RVA with kayaks, we're gonna work, what do we have to do for paperwork and where do we get the paperwork? I know nothing about this. Can you just pull in at the first scale and get the board there? I wouldn't say scale, but where you get your trucking permits. Usually the first scale has truck permits. Mm -hmm. Maybe someone knows the answer. Here's the lodge. right behind us. I cleaned those mirrors today. <laughs> I, I try to clean them every single time we fuel up. Some places don't have squeegees. Or they're just not the best squeegee. Or I'm just adding more mud to the mirror yeah. that I'm taking off. <laughs> depending on the fuel station. But some of the people use those squeegees on. Yeah. This is about the area we saw the moose yesterday. Okay. Hey bird, this is a road.
we all looking for moose? And a bear. And a bear. Uh, I think we're done with bears. I mean, we've seen some bears this way, but not very often. I mean, there's a chance of seeing a bear in BC. Anywhere in BC. But there's some hot spots where there's more bears. Bears come into the town of Penticton. Oh, fine. Just something that happens. But we also have coyotes and everything else in town, too. Yeah, last week I saw quite a few um, coyotes. highway was flat before I became a trucker. <laughs> Not so much now. Didn't realize how many hills and valleys and dip, ups and down dips there are until you're in a big rig. But at some point you also thought Vancouver is a longer drive. Yeah, Vancouver used to be far away. Now it's, now it's close. I know we talked about it before when growing up, we were about an hour away from one of the major cities. Yeah, we were an hour and a half away. <laughs> and that was a big deal, a day yeah. trip. That was a big deal driving an hour and a half away to big city. You only do that a couple times a year. Yep, and that was like, what? <laughs> and now five hours feels shorter than that hour. Yeah. Funny how the road gets smaller. I guess the more privilege you have, the smaller the world gets. The more you can get out and see stuff, the smaller the world gets. And you have to like driving too. You have to like driving. Traveling. Yeah. Flying or driving. The more traveling you do, the smaller the world gets.
Driving right along the side of Snoqualmie River like this, beautiful viewpoints, wildlife. Yeah, I got a pretty sweet job. I know that Jess is coming with more regularly, or very regularly, but every other week right now. Makes life even better. I might do that to the vacation and then we'll see after the vacation. To this till vacation? Every other week and then we'll see if I do multiple weeks or not after vacation. That's it. I see the signing for the end of Manning Park. I haven't recorded video through Manning Park for a while. Huge thank you to all the new uh, people jumping in and to all the loyal people that have been here for years now. Commenting, thumbs up, watching. It's pretty sweet. Pretty darn sweet, so thank you. I really, really appreciate it. 2,000 subscribers strong? Yeah, that's pretty awesome. I, I'm happy with that. Thank you. I'm out of here. I'll see you tomorrow. Hopefully in Idaho, but who knows? <laughs> You guys rock. Adios. <laughs>